Like Nick said, my name is Julie Smith. I'm a design-minded developer currently based out of San Francisco Bay Area, where I'm working at the Center for Investigative Reporting as a Knight Mozilla Fellow. Um, so what I'm doing these days is designing and building interactive graphics, data visualizations, news apps, and front-end libraries for journalists and news organizations to use. Um, so later in this presentation, we'll get to a data-driven interactive. Um, so it's going to be a little news heavy, so heads up. But um, today we're going to talk about SVG. And more specifically, we're going to talk about how to animate SVG graphics with this library called snap.svg. And I'm not sure how many of you work with SVG regularly, but just in case you need, um, you're unfamiliar and need a little bit of a refresher, we'll go through that first. So why SVG? Um, some basics. SVG stands for Scalable Vector Graphic, and it's exactly that. It's a 2D vector image format, and it's text-based, which allows direct manipulation via CSS and JavaScript. And it's really good to use because it's resolution independent, so it looks good at any size. It's lightweight, it's scalable, interactive, and it's accessible. So as far as resolution independence goes, it'll look great at any size. It's never going to look fuzzy. So here you can see the exact same file repeated three different sizes, and it maintains the same level of quality no matter how large it gets, even if the screen size is zoomed in. And it's lightweight. So this file. Um, one kilobyte, the uh, comparable ping would be eight times that. So because SVG images are defined as text elements, um, they can be significantly smaller to download than your standard image files. Um, so they're performant. You can also style them directly, which you obviously can't do with a JPEG. <laughs> um, and you can do fun things like gradient fills. And they're interactive. <laughs> so you can attach event handlers to SVG, SVG elements with JavaScript, just like you would with HTML. Um, there are some gotchas with jQuery, which is why we use Snap instead. Um, plus, since SVG is based on a coordinate system, it's really easy to animate. And this is an SVG file, um, what it actually looks like in code. And it is super accessible because, as you can see, you can read it. And you can get to things like title attributes, which means screen readers can see it. Uh, Google can find it. So you have a lot better SEO and um, assistive technology. All right. So that's SVG. And then why do we animate it? So animation provides a couple great, um, great things for user interfaces. But I must admit, I struggle with animation a little bit because I have conflicted opinions about whether the extra code and computation for animations um, does or does not outweigh performance concerns. Because there's a give and take with that decision making process. But for today, we're just going to put performance hits on the back burner and focus on opportunities that animation offers to enhance the user experience. So, on that note, some of these opportunities include the ability to do these four things to create fluid transitions, provide visual feedback, guide the user, and create an emotional response. So, there's been a lot of discussion lately about how to create effective animated interfaces. Google's material design guidelines are one example that definitely springs to mind. Um, but for now, I'll just go over some of the basics. So when you think about animations and interaction design, the key thing to keep in mind is time. Animations are time-based. And good animations smooth the transition of an element's state or appearance in a way that adds meaning and value to their experience. So things like physics, speed, synchronization all come into play when you're designing animations. And the more you can mimic true to life experiences, the more seamless and invisible the animation will be to your user, which is exactly what you want. The goal of animating an element is to make the screen function more like the real world. In real life, things don't abruptly change state. An ice cube doesn't go from a solid to a liquid in a split second. Rather, it melts, transitioning from one state to the next. And without that transition, 
the ice cube and a puddle of water seem like two completely different things altogether. It's the transition that keeps the mental model. And the same thing goes for animated graphics and UI elements. When things change abruptly, your user gets lost. But by animating the change, for example, by animating the scroll to an anchor instead of directly jumping to it, then your user always knows where they are and context is preserved. So here's a basic example. So here you can see the change of position over a second. I'll play it one more time. So in the first one, you can see there's no transition for the change. It just, the circle just jumps from one end to the next. For the other two, you get a more natural movement and it, it's, it's not jarring at all. Um, Facebook's Jake Blakely recently wrote a really great blog post on the why of animation design, some of which we've gone over already, um, but I'll summarize it here again. So, fluid transitions, visual feedback or context to an interaction. So, an example would be a progress bar or a loading icon, something that lets the user know something's happening. And then animations can guide the user's attentions. Our eyes are naturally drawn to things that move, and animations can help people know what's next. Um, and then animations can also elicit an emotional response. And this is the really interesting thing that I've been trying to play with lately, um, because animations that are well executed have real world impact on how a person feels. So a person can be delighted, disappointed, frustrated, all thanks to the animation they've had or the interaction they've had with your website. So now that we know why we use SVGs and why we animate them, why do we use Snap to do it? The quick answer is because it is really easy. But of course, there's a longer answer too. Um, Snap is essentially the replacement for RAPAL, which was the original um, SVG generation library. It was written by the same person, Dmitry Bernofsky. Um, and Snap is really comprehensive. It has a really amazing animation API and um, it's free open source and it's also fairly lightweight. It's um, lighter than jQuery, it's lighter than D3, so if you wanna do SVG animations, I tend to just use Snap if I have SVGs at all and then write van vanilla JavaScript from there so that I keep my dependencies low. Plus, it can do really cool things like this. <laughs> this is just their demo site, but if you want to know how to make an espresso, there you go. <laughs> Try a latte. Lovely. The globe one's kind of fun too. So it's pretty powerful. All right, so how do we get started? Um, we'll walk through some examples about how easy this is to use. Uh, so this code right here just simply creates this square. Uh, you start with an SVG um, tag on your HTML page that just says SVG, and then you give it, um, you can give it an idea of some sort so that you can grab it. And then you define your rectangle uh, with your starting coordinates and then how um, width and height. And then you give it an attribute, such as the fill color. And you can do all sorts of attributes when you're animating these things. And then you call the function and draw the square. And then you can attach events to the square. So you have the square that you already drew and then you attach a click event just like you would with jQuery and then it fills the color. Pretty standard. Nice and simple, just like you expect it to work. And then you can start animating. And so this is the same thing, you have your click event, and then you animate it with um, the attribute, how long you want it to take, so this will go for one second, and then what sort of easing you want. And then it animates it. And this is obviously a really simple example that you could handle with CSS or something, but um, this just illustrates how 
intuitive um, the library is. So uh, here's an example with existing SVGs. So not only can you create your own SVG elements, you can also uh, take an SVG that you use, that you created in Illustrator Inkscape and use that on your page and um, still use Snap with that. So in that case, you um, define it the same way. And then you can do fun stuff like add gradient fills. So it lets you have, it has this gradient function. You can put in your gradient, the colors you want to use, and then you add the gradient as your fill and attach it to the element. And then you have a pretty little gradient Twitter icon. And there's your transforms, which is essentially the same thing, but now we add a hover state, just dot hover like you'd expect. You have your in and out functions and your animation. And you get pretty spinning birds. So that's, um, that's the basic how it works. There's some resources for you. Um, what I'll go through now is a data visualization that I've been working on. Um, sorry, the content's a little bit heavy. <laughs> um, but we'll go through this anyway. So, <laughs> um, so what I was trying to do here, this is actually a, what I call a uh, animated data sonification because the goal of this project was to take um, data fatalities for mass shootings and then uh, plot it over time, but with audio. So I have a MP3 file that I created um, with a MIDI time Python library that plays through all of the mass shootings since 1982. Um, and it goes through and plots them over time. And so, like I said before, the key thing about animations is also time. So what I was trying to do here was hook in animations with the um, HTML audio tag and then have this synchronized data sonification visualization combo. Um, so this is what it, how it goes. I don't know if you'll be able to hear it too well, but we'll try. So what it's doing, each dot represents a single fatality. And then as the audio file plays, there's an event listener. Snap has an event listener um, that fires off these animations. So it randomly picks different dots and drops them from the screen. Ooh. Corresponding to, let's try that again. Um, It's still in the works, hasn't been published yet. Don't worry. <laughs> um. So as time goes on, the dots fall off the screen and we have this little snap animated timeline that goes through and fills each of the bars. And so what I think the animation is accomplishing here The bar at the bottom gives you your progress. It's pretty standard, but with Snap, it's nice and smooth. And um, animating the way the, um, each bar fills was surprisingly simple, because um, it actually expands it from, it doesn't just change the color of the bar. it animates the bar changing from the zero, zero point to the bottom point. So you kind of get this fill effect that matches the timing of the audio file. And then with the dots, um, again, exper experimenting with the emotional effect of animation, um, I thought it seemed like a fairly effective way to just show the tragic loss of life that happens with mass shootings. Um, 
and with Snap, it was really easy to put this all together. Um, We'll just let it play out because it gets a little heavy. So that's all I've got. <laughs> um, also, I should throw it out there. If anyone is interested in uh, data visualization, um, this fellowship that I'm doing, next year's the 2016 Knight Mozilla Fellowship application is due in, on the 17th. So if anybody wants to like try something sort of fun, you should apply. <laughs> and that's all I've got. Thanks. Thanks.